Let's not be our own 21st century lynch mob. I said, let's not be our own 21st century lynch mob, hanging ourselves on what's hip and what's live. Hanging ourselves on what's hip and what's live, because right under our feet, we being deprived and being sold a lie. That HBCUs are ghetto, or that we are incapable of educating ourselves. You know that's cap, but the bottle that reads thirst trap. Do not fall for that mouse trap, but let my words be, be, be like a fishing rod that lures you into this deep blue sea. Don't you see? This is a sight to see. An HBCU is where you are supposed to be. I said an HBCU is where you are supposed to be because they try to treat us like we don't know thyself because all they show us is the stats of bodies piling up like, like double doubles. But this side of the sheet, they don't want you to see which is this black on black crime, which is us at HBCUs assassinating each other's minds. Intellectual assassins who pulled the trigger of the lethal weapon of an open book that we keep tucked just in case somebody try to act up and try to tell us that we came from slaves when they came from us because black history is world history. So we put our bullets and pistols to rewrite and kill the narrative and rewrite and paint pictures of a Picasso woe that looks just like you. Because here at HBCUs, this is what we do here at HBCUs. Who we are, we embrace. Colorism is like a crayon mark that can actually be erased. Everybody say, yeah. yeah. All right, so um, that, that name of that poem is called My Dark Brown Eyes. And before I kind of get into that, like, um, how y'all doing? How how All right, I know y'all munching on y'all Chick-fil-A. You know what I'm saying? When I was in school, when I was in high school, I didn't have Chick-fil-A. So I'm, I'm, I'm hating on y'all just a little bit. Is that cool? Yeah. I'm a little jealous because I had like them tater tots with like the milk carton with like uh, like a hamburger that was like left over, you know, that the cat plate just kind of like smushed together. So I'm hating, but nah, what's up, y'all? Uh, my name is Warren Hawkins III. I'm excited to be here. Like, I'm excited. Like, can I tell y'all a secret? Yeah. Uh, y'all cool, so I trust y'all. Like, I couldn't sleep last night. Some of y'all like. Wow, like you just talking to us. Like, I like, know I couldn't sleep because when I see young people, especially young people who look like me, and especially a young man who's a reflection of me, right? I can't help but get excited because it's an opportunity to let y'all know about a, a, a something that you may have never knew existed, right? And, and I'm gonna explain what that means. But first, like I said, I, I'm Warren Hawkins III. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a preacher, I'm, I'm a minister. Uh, I'm a two-time author, I have two books. Um, I'm an international and national motivational speaker. I spoke on BET, MTV, I spoke on the same stage as Barack Obama. Um, and I don't say it to brag, I say it to say that there's greatness that looks like you out here, right? And the sky is not the limit, the stars are, right? Why settle for, for, for the sky? Everybody else settling for the sky. Go above and beyond there, right? And um, I'm a motivational speaker, graduate of Clark Atlanta University. Um, let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you know what HBCU stands for. Just didn't blur it out. Historical Black University. Yep, okay. It was a little shaky, but y'all got it. Um, raise your hand if you are a freshman. Okay, lit. Raise your hand if you're a sophomore. Even lit. Raise your hand if you are a junior. Raise your hand if you are a senior. Okay, so we got uh, freshmen and sophomores here. That's what's up. I didn't know what an HBCU stood for until I was a senior in high school. So y'all got me beat. Historically black colleges and universities, right? Historically black college, universities, right? So HBCUs, right? And I graduated like from B, that, that's the thing at HBCUs. Every, every HBCU be like B. Like, like we, we all D. Like, I, like CAU is D, FAMU is D, you know, spell, like everybody's D, right? Or are either illustrious, right? So I graduated from the illustrious Clark Atlanta University. And y'all, I just graduated last year. Like, Y'all saying, wow, for real? No. Somebody the other day um, told me I was like I was 16. You know, and that like really hurt my feelings. She said, she said, you do, you do. <laughs> but, um. You didn't have a little suit on, you probably See, that's why I had to wear it, you know what I'm saying? Because if I would've had on my J's or my Nikes, they would've thought I was one of the students. They'd be like, are you wrong? They'd help you. But I'm gonna dive right into this now. But um, I just graduated with my bachelor's, right? Um, last year, and currently I'm still in school. I'm getting my master's degree. Raise your hand if you ever did like a AP program where you get credits early or something like that. In a sense, that's what I'm doing, right? You can do that in college. I'm doing an accelerated advanced standard master's program while I'm getting my master's in one year. It usually takes people two to three years. So in a sense, I just graduated last May with my bachelor's. I'll be graduating this May again with my master's degree, right? 
So um, I'm ready to dive into this. Um, so I'm gonna talk to y'all about the college experience, really just about life. Uh, and, and my experience is the HBCU experience. Um, raise your hand if you know what PWI stands for. I just blurred it out. You got it right, yep. Predominantly what? Everybody say it together. Predominantly what? White institution. HBCU is what? Historic Black College University. Yep, Black College University. All right, so you got HBCUs, PWIs, of course you got your other types of schools. But um, just a little bit about me, about how this all started. I didn't know what the HBCU stood for. Like I said, y'all got me beat. I didn't know what the HBCU stood for until I was a senior in high school. Everybody say, bro, what? Right, exactly, like shame on me, right? And the thing is, um, as a senior in high school, like it came fast. They was like, Mr. Warren, now it's your time to start applying for colleges. I'm like, bro, why you ain't tell me? Like, I, I knew it was gonna come, but I didn't know it was gonna come this fast. So when I started like applying for schools, what I did was I started applying for what, PW? PWIs, because I didn't even know about HBCUs, and this is my senior year of high school, and I'm feeling like I'm the man, I'm getting accepted to all these PWIs, I'm like, yeah, can't nobody tell me nothing, look at this acceptance letter I'm posting on the gram, on Twitter, on, on Snapchat, and when I visited these PWIs, y'all ever have, like, a uh, um, taste of the food that just needed more seasoning? you like, like, this, this just needs some more flavor, like, like this, this is kind of just, like, dry, right? And when I visited these PWIs, great schools, I'm not knocking PWIs, but I knew that it was something that I needed more of, right? I knew I needed that Thanksgiving dinner. I knew I needed them mac that macaroni, right? Sweet potatoes, some y'all, like, mm, forget this Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but I, I knew that I needed, it was something that, that was missing, right? And my mom was like, you know, son, you need to go to an HBCU. She said, I see it on you. She said, you need to be surrounded by like-minded individuals who look like you that also is great that's just like you. She said, did you know that there are schools out there specifically designed, strategically designed for those who look like us to excel, to be great, and, and, and really just to be, be ourselves? And I was like, no. Like, if somebody ever told you something, you're like, no, nah, like, that can't be true. I'm like, no, nah, that, that can't be real. Why? Excuse my ignorance, please, right? Because at the time, I was in a sense colonized, right? And what I mean by that is, I lived in the inner city of St. Louis. I was like the token kid of my school. Inner city of St. Louis, I'm like the kid, you're gonna be the one to make it out. You're gonna be the one that's great. You're like our straight A star student, right? I was like the token kid. And I was surrounded by people who didn't necessarily see themselves making it out that neighborhood, or, or, or excelling beyond the extent of our neighborhood, right? And I was the one who, who, who believed that, that I could, right? And when I heard about these schools that existed that was specifically designed for people who look like us to excel, I was like, this can't be true, right? And to make a long story short, I ended up applying. I was like, mom, okay, you're right. Let me just give it a try. And I started applying for these, what, HBC, what? U's, HBCUs, right? And the first school I applied to, raise your hand if you ever heard of Howard. Okay, raise your hand if you're thinking about going to Howard. Y'all like, uh, and y'all got a lot of time to decide because a lot of y'all are freshmen and sophomores, so. Um, that's good that y'all, you know, know about these schools. Um, guess what I got? I got denied. Everybody say denied. denied. I got literally denied. I was like, oh my gosh, me? Oh, these PWIs accepted me, but the HBCU denied me? And I was like, all right, forget Howard. Forget Howard. You know, when you like, when you when you try to act like you're not mad, but you're really mad, get Howard. So I applied to FAMU. Does anybody know where that's at? It's in Florida. Y'all heard of FAMU? Raise your hand if you're thinking about going to FAMU. Okay, that's what's up. Guess what happened with FAMU? Everybody say, denied. denied. They denied me. So I'm like, I'm really mad. I'm punching the wall. Oh, oh, I'm going to get this. Forget oh. Right? But I can't tell you that sometimes in life, it's okay. No's are external and not internal. Meaning you may get a no on the outside, but in your mind, you have to tell yourself, yes, 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 yes. And you got to tell yourself that redirection is okay. Sometimes when we don't end up where we want to go, it's right where we're supposed to be. Because if I were to end up at Howard or FAMU, I wouldn't be speaking to you all right now. It's a reason that I'm here right now. I would have never met Sierra, who is my colleague at CAU, who invited me out here to speak with you all, right? So like, I, it, everything happens for a reason, and that's okay. So, so don't think a no is a no. Simply say it's a redirection. 
It's a redirection. So you may be uh, have your eyes set on on, 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 on a school or, or something in your life that you wanted to do. You may have some family members in your life who may be telling you, yeah, you know, your great uncle, 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 and, that, and grandma, and my sister, grandma, mama, 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 who, who friends and saw you when you was a baby, and her mama, cousin, cousin went to this school, so you going to that school, and you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and you may get denied. But that's what? That's okay. Because you gotta trust the process. Everybody say trust the process. And I had to trust the process. And what I did, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this. Hey, can you see you think one more time, mama? If it don't work, forget it. And guess what the third school I applied to was? Clark and Lane University. And I got accepted. I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. And make a long story short, I visited CAU and I loved it. As soon as I arrived to campus inside the car, for the student orientation, like right before we enrolled as students over the summer, it was like they gave you like a preview orientation. And like, as soon as I arrived in the car with my mom, my dad, and my siblings, all I hear is, C, 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 A, 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 U, 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 U. And I hear rapping, I hear beats. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Like, like, that's who we are. I couldn't help but naturally start moving. If I turn the beat right now, we're gonna start moving naturally. Right? And I realized that's that flavor. Remember I, I needed that flavor? That's that flavor I was looking for. And I remember going into the first opening session, I was so excited. What I did was I sat dead in the front. Like how y'all like smack dead in the front? I sat smack dead in the front. And a lot of my other incoming freshman peers, they all sat in the back trying to be cool. I sat smack dead in the front. Why did I sit in the front? Because I wasn't concerned with what was behind me. I was concerned with what was in front of me, right? I was concerned with what was in front of me. So I had no intention on sitting in the back. And guess what was el else was in the front? Raise your hand if you ever heard of like student leadership positions as far as like a, a miss something of like the HBCU, SGA president. Like some of y'all may be in student, student leadership now. The student leadership, the student, the people in student leadership were on the stage. And I saw a guy who was the SGA president and I looked at him and I looked at my mama. I said, mama, one day I'm gonna be SGA president. She said, okay. I said, no, no, I'm gonna be SGA president. And this is me as a freshman before I even enroll. I said, I'm gonna be SGA president just watch, she said, okay, buddy, I believe you, okay. And I came to tell you that like, you ain't gotta try to blend in, right? You don't have to try to blend in because the thing is, before I started CAU, you know how many people told me, oh, Atlanta is too far. CAU, like you trying to be different and go to an HBCU, you trying to be great, like you know how many people try to talk me out of it? I'ma show y'all a little demonstration. Is it cool if I get two people? I promise I can have to do that crazy. All right, even one person. My gentleman? Perfect, perfect, perfect. And what's your name? Zion. Zion? Everybody say, yeah, Zion. Yeah, Zion. All right, let's get it. So, what's in the box? All right, so I'm going to have you do something. I want you first to try to squeeze into this baby shoe. I want you to, he said, huh? <laughs> I want you to try as hard as you can, all right? He's like, huh? <laughs> squeeze into that baby shoe. He got his toe in there. Hey, hey, give it up for him. He got his toe in there. <laughs> That's something. All right, now I want you to do, I want you to put on this clown shoe. And I want you to tie it and kind of take some steps in it. And I, I'm going somewhere here. Some of y'all like, what's the point of this, Mr. Moore? Feel kind of goofy, right? I feel like it's like on some, on some weird stuff, right? All right, give it up for him. I give it up for Zion, thank you so much. All right, so the reason I shared that is because remember I said, when I chose CAU, people were trying to say, it's too far. You trying to go to Atlanta, what? Like, bro, you, try, you trying to be on there. You trying you try to better yourself, what, bro? Like, like, people were basically trying to discourage me, right? And I can't tell you, it's gonna be people in your life, especially your junior, your senior, even now. When you start making some college decisions, when you start making some decisions about bettering yourself, about elevating yourself around the people you grew up with, around your ride or dies, around some of the people who you thought was your friends, they're gonna try to discourage you and try to put a baby shoe on you. They're gonna try to get you to fit into what they want you to be. Oh, ain't nobody else made it out of our neighborhood, so you can't do it. Ain't nobody else went to Spelman, went to CAU, went to NCAT, went to FAMU, or left the neighborhood. So you can't do it. And they'll try to get you to squeeze into this shoe. My man, you couldn't squeeze into this game. Nope. So many of us should never, ever, ever try to squeeze into when people try to belittle us. 
Make me a promise that y'all won't do that, right? She said, you ain't gonna do it? I, look at her, she said, she ain't gonna do that. And it's gonna be some of your closest people. And dad said a little ways, girl, you think you better than us, no? <laughs> girl, you doing too much, no, y'all just not doing enough. Here, oh, she said period, she said period. But um, everybody say clown shoe. Clowns, what do they do? They joke, have fun. It's going to be people in your life who try to get you to take your future as a joke. When people see that you better in yourself, they'll try to set you up. Right before you go off to college, girl, come out to this party. Girl, try this. Our, our, our bro, you, you lame. You actually wearing a suit? You think you better? Like, seriously. Like, when I start wearing suits, people start saying little stuff to me. People try to get you to take your future as a joke, but you ain't no, you ain't no clown. You ain't here to play no games. You ain't here to play no jokes with your future. So you, you, ain't here, you, you ain't here for the laughs and games, right? So if you gotta cut some people off, by all means. Because the older you get, the more you start losing friends. Because when I was growing up, Ronald McDonald had a whole crew. But now he just by himself, right? <laughs> and that's what, okay. So I said it to say, y'all got it? If you start losing friends, it's okay. Your future is at stake. And sometimes people be hating, right? People be hating. All right, so let me keep going. So. Guess who took this picture of me? How do both groups get that right? Because mom, yeah. More than likely it's moms who take the picture. That's so true. And they take the words from us and they slap them on Facebook. Like, gosh, let me see it first. But I'm walking uh, in an awkward way because well, I just got done crying. This is the first official day that, that all parents had to drop you know, the students off and leave. And I told myself I'm gonna go cry. And then next thing I know, my mama start crying. I'm gonna miss you. Then my daddy start crying. He try to he try to hide it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I see you crying. And I start crying. We all was crying. And then basically, you know, I, I hugged my family, kissed them goodbye. And this is me walking into something new. This is actually one of my favorite pictures ever. I know it's awkward. I know it's me, but it's I, honestly one of my favorite pictures because simply because I, I'm stepping into my future. I'm stepping into my purpose, right? And I can't even tell you that it's okay. Like, like step into your future, step into your purpose. I'm alone in this picture. I have support from my family, but I'm alone. And some of y'all may be alone going, I mean, uh, going to college, going to school, or, or whatever, right? Some of y'all may be the first person in your family to ever go to school, to ever do something different. That's okay. See beyond the extent of your neighborhood. Remember I said, don't settle for the stars. I mean, don't settle for the clouds, settle for the stars. Because if it, if, if it don't start with you, then who? If not you, then who? So you gotta think about that, right? I'm the first person in my family to attend the HBCU. I'm the first person in my family to be an author. I'm the first person in my family in a sense of motivational speaker, right? But you gotta continue the legacy. The legacy is meant to start with you or continue with you. And remember, some people in your family couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do the things that you're privileged to do. My mama didn't have the opportunity to, to be able to go to HBCU. She didn't necessarily have anybody speaking like to her. So. What stands on this stage before you is my mom. We fighting over the mic. Her words are my words, my words are her words. So everything I'm saying to y'all is everything she said to me because she couldn't, right? Not because she wouldn't, but simply because she couldn't, right? And um, as I wrap this up, I'm kind of skip this, um, but I went to CAU and I hit the ground running. I, as a freshman, I ended up like being involved. I did like this thing called the induction speech for our freshman class ceremony. I was selected uh, out of all the freshmen, about 900 freshmen, to basically speak in our induction ceremony. And from then, I went on to be freshman class president, sophomore class president, student government association vice president, which is like over the whole student body. And then for my senior year, which is last year, student government president, right? I'm the first person in CAU history to, 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 to win four elections and the first person in CAU history to run unopposed meaning nobody ran against me for SGA vice president and SGA president. So when you set your mark, ain't nobody messing with you. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta go to college to be mediocre or average. There's organizations that you can start on your own. There's so many things you can do. There's bands, there's cheerleading, right? So when you go to college, there's so many things, especially at an HBCU, that you can do. Yep. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Um, do y'all have any quick questions? Anything? Uh, and I'm in a fraternity too. I'll fight off fraternity incorporated, so yeah. You like it? I love it. I love it. Um, any y'all interested in joining this sorority or fraternity? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to say I've had a lifetime movie. Oh, you said a lifetime movie? Well, yeah, I kind of have to. I kind of have to. I don't have to. 
Oh, yeah, parents are great. Yeah. What's your parents? Can I ask you? AKA? Okay. That's what's up. So y'all got to continue that legacy. I love it. I love it. Anybody first time interested in Greek? Uh, well, Divine Nine and Greek organizations like fraternities and sororities. Okay. And y'all may not be interested now, but y'all may be interested later. And that's okay. But um, college in general it is, is what I'm emphasizing. HBCU is unique in its own way, but if you don't end up going to HBCU, that's okay. Point of this is further yourself, don't settle. You ain't gotta be mediocre, you ain't gotta be average, you ain't gotta be what your neighborhood limits you to. You can be different, you can go above and beyond. All right. All right, thank you.